Hello, good evening and welcome to St Peter's at West Knighton for evening prayer on Friday the 18th of January. We're using material for Epiphany season in the Church of England's Common Worship Daily Prayer, which you can find as an app online, or if you're following in the Red Book, you need to turn towards the beginning and after prayer during the day, you will find morning and evening prayer provision for ordinary time and the seasons. And the third of those couplings within seasons after Advent and Christmas is Epiphany. May God make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your glory is proclaimed in all the world. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. You gave your light as a light to the nations, so you gave your Christ as a light to the nations, and through the anointing of the Spirit you established us as a royal priesthood. As you call us into your marvellous light, may our lives bear witness to your truth, and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We say the O Worship the Lord hymn. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, bow down before him his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. Lo, at his feet lay thy burden of carefulness, high on his heart he will bear it for thee. Comfort thy sorrows, answer thy prayerfulness, guiding thy steps as may best for thee be. Fear not to enter his courts in the slenderness of the poor wealth thou wouldst reckon as thine. Truth in its beauty and love in its tenderness, these are the offerings to lay on his shrine. These, though we bring them in trembling and fearfulness, he will accept for the name that is dear. Mornings of joy give for evenings of tearfulness. Trust for our trembling and hope for our fear. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before him, his glory proclaim. With gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, kneel and adore him, the Lord is his name. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And so we turn to the back of the book, keeping our finger in uh, evening prayer during Epiphany, to turn up the Psalter. The appointed psalmody this evening, Psalm 68. Psalm 68. They come after the canticles, which are simply numbered. The psalms have the word psalm before the number, so you may be on canticle 68 unless you've got the word psalm there. We open and close with a refrain and say the glory be, glory be before we repeat it at the conclusion. And may use the prayer that follows in silence if we have it. Psalm 68. Sing to the Lord, sing praises to his name. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those that hate him flee before him. As the smoke vanishes, so may they vanish away. As wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish to the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them make merry with gladness. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides on the clouds. The Lord is his name. Rejoice before him. Father of the fatherless, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners to songs of welcome. But the rebellious inhabit a burning desert. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the heavens dropped down rain at the presence of God, the Lord of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent down a gracious rain, O God. You refreshed your inheritance when it was weary. 
Your people came to dwell there. In your goodness, O God, you provide for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of women who bore the tidings. Kings and their armies, they flee, they flee, and women at home are dividing the spoil. Though you stayed among the sheepfolds, see now a dove's wings covered with silver and its feathers with green gold. When the Almighty scattered the kings, it was like snowflakes falling on Zalman. You mighty mountain, great mountain of Bashan. You towering mountain, great mountain of Bashan. Why look with envy, you towering mountain, to the mount which God has desired for his dwelling, the place where the Lord will dwell for ever. The chariots of God are twice ten thousand, even thousands upon thousands. The Lord is among them, the Lord of Sinai in holy power. You have gone up on high and led captivity captive. You have received tribute even from those who rebelled, that you may reign as Lord and God. Blessed be the Lord who bears our burdens day by day, for God is our salvation. God is for us, the God of our salvation. God is the Lord who can deliver from death. God will smite the head of his enemies, the hairy scalp of those who walk in wickedness. The Lord has said, from the heights of Bashan, from the depths of the sea will I bring them back, till you dip your foot in blood, and the tongue of your dogs has a taste of your enemies. We see your solemn processions, O God, your processions into the sanctuary, my God and my King. The singers go before, the musicians follow after, in the midst of maidens playing on timbrels. In your companies, bless your God, bless the Lord, you that are the fount of Israel. At the head there is Benjamin, at least of the tribes, the princes of Judah in joyful company, the princes of Zebulun and Naphtali. Send forth your strength, O God, establish, O God, what you have wrought in us. For your temple's sake in Jerusalem, kings shall bring their gifts to you. Drive back with your word the wild beast of the reeds, the herd of the bull like the brutish hordes. Trample down those who lust after silver, scatter the peoples that delight in war. Vessels of bronze shall be brought from Egypt. Ethiopia will stretch out her hands to God. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Make music in praise of the Lord. He rides on the ancient heaven of heavens and sends forth his voice, a mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose splendour is over Israel, whose power is above the clouds. How terrible is God in his holy sanctuary, the God of Israel, who gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. So back to evening prayer during Epiphany to the canticle, a song of praise. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise forever. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. And say so to you in our first Bible reading, chapter 4 of Genesis. Verses 1 to 16, and then 25 and 6. <coughs> Chapter 4 of Genesis, verses 1 to 16, and then 25 and 26. Now the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next she bore, bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and a Cain a tiller of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground, and Abel, for his part, brought of the firstlings of his flock their fat portions, and the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. 
The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain said to his brother Abel, let us go out into the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it will no longer yield to you its strength. You will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Today you have driven me away from the soil and I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Anyone who meets me may kill me. Then the Lord said to him, not so, whoever kills Cain will suffer a sevenfold vengeance, and the Lord will put a mark on Cain, so that no one who came upon him would kill him. Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth, for she said, God has appointed for me another child instead of Abel, because Cain killed him. To Seth also a son was born, and he named him Enosh. At that time, people began to invoke the name of the Lord. And so we have another sudden step, just a few verses down the line from a very primitive creation account, such as might be shared with other um, ethnicities, views of how a deity may have been involved with the formation of all things. We've moved now into what seems a fairly standard sort of Hebrew scripture, Old Testament story of uh, intrigue and violence and death and punishment and God and humanity. So if it wasn't for the fact that we know these names, Eve, Cain and Abel, uh, as I say, it could have been, it could have been any time in Hebrew history or indeed right down to today. <coughs> and uh, I don't quite know how this all works because um, there are no daughters mentioned and uh, there would have to be a certain amount of uh, incest before um, the human race grew to be large enough uh, for people unrelated to marry and have children with one another. And uh, when Cain kills his brother Abel, Cain is concerned that he'll be killed. Well, as far as we know, he's either going to be killed by his mum or his dad. Um, unless there are other children or indeed other peoples about. But um, that's probably a question above our pay grade and certainly one that we aren't able to address this evening. And uh, I'm never quite sure why it is that uh, Abel uh, gets on good side for his firstlings of the flock and Cain doesn't um, for producing um, a sacrifice for his produce if the one is agricultural and the other is pastoral. Um, it may be because this was written at, in a time when worship involved the shedding of blood, the giving of life, uh, and that was of course seen as being of much more value as a sacrifice to a deity than uh, simply giving some crops. But then if you and your people are agriculturalists, that is what you have to give. So as I say, I'm not sure there is obviously something symbolic about giving the firstlings of the flock, but only to those who, this must have been written later, who at a time understood that uh, firstborn had to be redeemed by the giving of another firstborn. So Jesus, when he was born, was taken to the temple and two turtle doves were given so that he might be redeemed to his parents and not given to the Lord. So yes, this uh, business is quite difficult and uh, I think Cain has every right to feel hard done by, but apparently God says just do well and you'll be accepted. 
but Cain kills his brother and says his punishment is too hard. I'll be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. You've driven me away from the soil, so I don't know. God seems to say, well, the, the soil will no longer yield you its strength. Um, that is obviously interpreted that he's going to be taken away so that you won't be able to um, raise crops from the ground at all. So he becomes, I guess, um, a wanderer and a traveller and uh, I guess must just take what he can either on the highways and byways or from other people's crops and herds, I don't know. But he's got this mark of Cain so that if anybody kills him, they will receive a sevenfold vengeance. I don't know what the mark means, I don't know what sevenfold vengeance means either. Because if you're giving it, if it's an eye for an eye and if you kill someone, you have to be killed yourself. How can you be killed seven times? I guess maybe the idea is that seven members of your household would be killed alongside you. I don't know quite what that means. But at any rate, um, the passage concludes with Adam and Eve having a second son. So as far as we know, there are four people alive again now. And then Seth has a son, so that's five, if I got my sons right. So we move to Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 to 33, as our second reading, Matthew 22 from 15. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The same day some Sadducees came to him, saying, There is no resurrection. And they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses said, If a man dies childless, his brother shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers among us. The first married and died childless, leaving the widow to his brother. The second did the same, so also the third, down to the seventh. Last of all, the woman herself died in the resurrection, then whose wife of the seven will she be, for all of them had married her? Jesus answered them, you are wrong, because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He is the God not of the dead, but of the living. And when the crowd heard it, they were astounded at his teaching. And so here again, as I've been saying, when we read the Gospels, we need to read them in the light of the fact they were written, the context in which they were written by Christians, for Christians, at a time of persecution when to be Christian meant that you were not dealt with by either the Jewish authorities or the state secular authorities well you uh, believed in a different God a different idea of a different king a different idea of uh, the kingdom you weren't likely to follow Caesar you were difficult to control and direct as a religious entity whereas the Pharisees which were the um, the majority Jewish sect at the time um, had privilege and were allowed to express their worship because it, they contained and controlled their peoples. Now, the Sadducees were also known and they had influence in certain parts of the world. They were the dominant, but they were the other sort of main groups. I suppose if you think of Christianity in the West, it might be like Roman Catholics and the Anglicans, or at least Christianity in the uh, Europe, so you've got Protestant and Catholic, let's say. So the Pharisees wanted to test him, we're told. And it may well be that the Christians had these sorts of debates with Pharisees and these sorts of debates with Sadducees. And so they're putting their answers into Jesus' mouth, one could say, or suggest, to give credibility to what they would, how they would respond in their actual circumstance. Because I'm not sure that the Pharisees 
perhaps have been quite invented when Jesus was around, but um, so it's more likely they'd have been, in fact, we hear him talking to Jews, don't we? And that's also not very helpful because he is Jewish and those that wrote this would have been Jewish. Nevertheless, we've got him having a conversation with Pharisees and Sadducees. The first were very careful about holiness and wouldn't accept money paid into the temple. So you had to change to buy um, animals for sacrifice. So you had to change your money from dirty money outside that was unholy to temple money at an extortionate exchange rate, I understand. And then by any animals that had been provided by the temple for sacrifice, because bringing your own, it wasn't up to standard. And uh, there again, you were probably charged over the odds. So they were very careful about this sort of thing. And uh, you had to pay your taxes to the temple and to Caesar. And uh, there was this trap built into that because uh, if Jesus said, well, you should pay your temple tax, then they get, he'd get into trouble with Caesar. If he you'd pay your tax to Caesar, um, then the temple would lose out. So it was one of those sort of you can't win type questions. And he says, you're putting me to the test, you hypocrites, show me the coin. And it's got the emperor's head on it. So he said, give it to the emperor. And give to God the things that are God's. So he baffles them. When they heard this, they were amazed. They left him and went away. The Sadducees ask a question about resurrection. Slightly mockingly. And amongst their people had um, died and left had seven brothers. Did you have seven brothers? Yes. There was, no, there were seven brothers, so the first brother, so you leave six brothers. Uh, and uh, there's this idea that a woman could be um, kin, go to a kinsman redeemer, so if she didn't have a child by one, she could go to another, at least in theory, if not in practice, and then have a child by the next in line, and that would retain that person um, we would say now the genes, but the, that person would be um, would continue in life, as it were. Um, the Pharisees believed in resurrection. The Sadducees that people would persist um, through their children and continue to exist through their children. So they say, "What happens in the resurrection? Who will this woman be married to?" And so Jesus addresses briefly this business of whether we are married when we are resurrected and I have to say I don't really understand his answer or the answer that has been put into his mouth apparently we will neither be married or given in marriage like angels in heaven so I'm not quite sure how we relate to those to whom we have been married but um, he moves on to say uh, God says I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob uh, effectively saying that he doesn't say I am the God of the one who was Abraham or I'm the the God was the God of Isaac and was the God of Jacob. It's all present tense, suggesting they're alive in this response or answer. Interestingly, we're not told that the Sadducees went away with their tail between their legs as the Pharisees did, but we're told that the crowd response, the crowds that were gathered and heard this discussion, were astounded at his teaching. And so back to evening prayer in Epiphany for our responsory, and we go on to the song of Mary. Arise, shine, for your light has come, the glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, the glory of the Lord is rising upon you. God's salvation has been openly shown to all people, the glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Arise, shine, for your light has come, the glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights, the anointed one on whom my spirit rests. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy. 
the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights, the anointed one on whom my spirit rests. Let us pray. One God, Father, Son, and Spirit, we come to you at the end of this day, looking back, firstly, perhaps, this evening on all that has been good, where we have used our skills, talents, authority, personality, and other gifts of creativity, and love the people we are to be a blessing to others, and they have recognised and understood, accepted that, and felt blessed and built up in themselves through their time with us, the things that we have done for them. They have been grateful and thankful, and so we have felt productive and fruitful. We thank you for the opportunities that we have had to rest, to be creative, <coughs> to be supportive, spending time with family or friends or colleagues, where we have enjoyed the beauty of the part of the world in which we live, or some other thing that may have just caught our eye and made us smile, maybe inside. We may have had good news. We may have been blessed to be able to use our money, our health, to enjoy food. So we thank you for all the blessings of this life. That's the source of all that is good. And we look back on the day also and recognise things about it that perhaps we would rather set aside. Where well, we have not been aware of you, where we have been hindered in expressing ourselves, where we have been hard pressed or anxious and bothered about relationship or tasks that we feel in, inadequate before, whether we lack time or the training, the skills or the ability, the money for things that we know we need to spend on. We may have felt isolated, alone, afraid, misunderstood, put down. Maybe news about health conditions that we suffer from, or news about health or relationships that others are in, for whom we have concerns, may have brought us low. And so we pray for your healing and your restoration in all of these circumstances. And we ask you to give us the strength to make amends. So we turn to your open doors prayer diary. We pray for Pastor Chai, whose name has been changed. He was a Hmong church leader who was fined heavily for distributing Hmong Bibles among tribal believers in the province. Praise God for his courage, or that person's courage, I'm assuming some man, I don't know why, for the courage of that pastor and for others who distribute God's word to their believing and non-believing neighbours. Christian Aid, we give you thanks for REACH, an organisation they work with supporting Iraqi and Syrian refugee, refugees. We pray that wherever Lava and Hamoudi are, who are pictured in the diary when they were in a camp, that they will be safe and that their lives are flourishing. With the Diocese of Salisbury cycle of prayer, we pray for the Lulworths, Winfrith, Newborough and Cholden all their minister, Z, Robert, Barbara. <coughs> we pray for those they serve and they work with and their officers, their wardens, treasurers and secretaries. We pray that you will bless their pastoral care in the four villages, especially for recently bereaved families, for outreach to community and visitors and their church buildings, which are in the process of reordering we pray that you will enable them to grow as your disciples, one church in four locations. It's their watchword. And we thank you for their school, Lord and Winfrith. Pray for the pupils there, also the junior and senior staff, the governors and parents, especially those involved, if any, in the Parent Teachers Association. Pray that all will be encouraged in their experience of life through their dealings with you in that place and that they will know their lives to be more, more, more fulfilled and fruitful. 
through their engagement with you in those institutions. And we pray your blessing on the streets in Warmwell, Beach Farm, Church Cottages, Dam Farm, Heath Cottages, Rectory Cottages, Roman Hill, Rose Cottage, the old Rectory, Vise Barn Cottages, Warmwell and Warmwell House. Pray your health, wealth, prosperity, salvation, healing, deliverance on these addresses. For those that don't know you in those addresses, they'll be drawn to faith as perhaps they find themselves singing or humming Christmas carols again in this season where you drew people to worship you through their experiences of, and awareness of the things of this world. And pray for those who do know you that they, like the shepherds, will return with rejoicing from their experience of you and that will draw others to faith. We pray for those like the shepherds involved in agriculture and in other business, that they will continue to do well with their budgeting, their sourcing, their selling, their prices, especially those in farming and in other seasonally affected uh, businesses in tourism, for, for example, running attractions or hospitality. They will continue to do well, we pray too, for the building salary and other enterprises um, in that village. And finally we bring to you those for whom we have concerns. Hand on my list, Vicky, Ben, Brian, Steph, Peter, Seaton, Arlo, John, Anna, Jan, Guy, David, Elizabeth, Mike, Charlotte, Andrea, Tony and Graham. We pray for these, that they will have your courage and wisdom, know your presence, that they will have hope in the face of their fears and anxiety, your stability and faithfulness may sustain and enable. We pray for restoration, for healing, for provision, whether it's financial, to do with health or relationship or work, in whatever area of life it is that is lacking, and in some cases significantly, in those for whom we pray. We thank you that you are the God of the impossible. We pray also for those that care for these, whether they are professionals, volunteers, children, parents, spouses, partners, that they too will have the support they need as they walk with ease with you. And finally, we thank you for all that's good in the lives of Sandy, John, Gareth, Linda, Derek and Thelma, and all others who recently died through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, those who have taken their own lives. Especially remember Linda as she was laid to rest today. Pray for all of whose years mine falls at this time, those we have known and loved but see no longer, and those that have served you here. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. And we pray for ourselves, Linda's family, friends, and all who mourn, those who face a change in life chances through some significant setback and therefore find themselves in grief also at this time. May you be for them, as we read in our Gospel reading at the funeral this afternoon, the way, the truth and the life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new, transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the Christ who sends us to the nations give us the power of his spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be 